Joining us now is Fred Fraser. He's vice president of the Dallas Police Association. Fred, we want to talk about that security because I know you and the DPA have been talking about increased security, not just at headquarters, but at substations. What's your concerns? Well, thanks, Rich, for having me. Uh, the concerns are is the, the areas that the public's uh, or just anybody in general is allowed to go into. Uh, you know, it's, it's sad to say, but you or anybody else that it's not a police personnel could show up at any one of our buildings in our parking lots uh, where our personal vehicles are, uh, uh, where we come and go from, uh, and, oh and no one's going to question you or there's no access code. And we've had this problem, we've had this discussion. Uh, Chief Brown's done a, actually a very good job of addressing it. Uh, but for some reason, when it falls back onto a city, uh, they, it falls on deaf ears. Well, it's a funding problem, and the city council is not <laughs> allocating enough money. What, what's the, yeah. in your opinion, what's oh, Well, in the my problem? opinion, the funding's there. The funding's always there. Uh, priority should be public safety, number one. If you want to make a safe city, you've got to take care of those that take care of you. Uh, the day-to-day -day men and women that are working out there need to be protected. Okay, now, this happened at police headquarters which may be more secure than the substations. Uh, absolutely. It's probably one of our securest buildings since it's the newest and has the newest technology. Uh, the glass in the front, I mean, you can think, you can say what you want about that. Uh, he did not have access to get up close. He's shot from the street. It's no different than the federal building. Uh, the federal building you can drive in front of as well. But uh, it, it, you know, it does, now we show some concerns of how, what are we going to do to now try to prevent this, somebody else uh, copying what he did. I have a lot of police officer friends, to a man, to a woman, they've expressed to me that they're really concerned about the atmosphere in America right now that you guys, you gals, have to serve in. Is that something that concerns it's you? It's very concerning. In my 19 years, this is probably the, the highest stress point that we've had with our officers. Uh, the lowest morale uh, and the highest stress because we have an atmosphere of where we have the far right uh, saying we're too invasive in privacy and then we have the far left saying we're just being too critical on when we arrest somebody. Well, there has to be middle ground and we're losing that middle ground. We've done a, we've done a very good job of showing transparency uh, with our department and with other departments in the Metroplex, but one situation triggers everything. Uh, we've seen it in Ferguson, we've seen it in Baltimore, we've seen it in New York. McKinney was the last one to just get hit. Uh, and we have these professional protesters that take advantage of it. Uh, and that's, that's not the way, you see the community there in those cities, they're like, this is not what we really want. Uh, but you see these uh, organizers that are making money off misery, and that's what's happening in our society. Yeah, are, there e are there easy solutions? Are there any solutions to, to, to this, or do we have to let things blow over? Uh, I, you know, there, you know there's, there's always like the, uh, the, they say the loud minority, which is the, 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 the folks that are the, the troublemakers that come out of the woodwork for no reason. And it doesn't matter by race when you say minority. You're talking about a specific group that comes out and they just... For some reason, this is their, their, get, their glitch and they're going to come after the police. And then you have the sil silent majority. And those are the common sense, uh, common sense, hardworking Americans. And for some reason, we need them to voice their opinion. And clearly, this guy had mental problems and race in no way this is nothing, plays into this one. Yeah, this has nothing to do with race. He was, he was mad at a system. It was, he was mad at a system that he thought was broke and he wanted to go take it out on the police. Something you and I talked about before we went on the air is, uh, is another criticism that police departments across America face is they become too militarized. And in the example of the Dallas Police Association, you have armored cars, but yeah. basically been told you can't use uh, them. We've been told to hide them. Uh, uh, you know, we have the Bearcats and we have the, the, uh, the APCs that roll around that these are protect our, you know, we're made of human flesh. Uh, bullets go through those cars. You see the squad cars, those bullets zing right through them. They go right through our vest. Uh, these vehicles that, that take our men and women where they need to go into hostile environments, this was a hostile environment that this man created with an armored type vehicle just as ours. Uh, you think maybe uh, today's incident will uh, change the argument on this one a little bit? Yeah, I hope that some of those that were critical on city council will say, you know what, that we do need these tools. Fred Fraser, Vice President of the Dallas Police Association, thank you, sir. Hey.